Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace, through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, these are the saints that are in the rooms, the saints watching in on the camera for the saints that couldn't make it, the saints out there that we don't even know about. But no peace to the wicked. We only say to them, repent that they might live. I know that's right. Let's uh boo -doo -doo. let's recap what we talked about last week. What prophet did we talk about last week? It was on Ezekiel. Isaiah, not Ezekiel. I mean, uh, not, not Isaiah, but yeah, it was Ezekiel. We talked about Ezekiel. What did we learn about Ezekiel? Ezekiel saw some things. You know what I'm saying? What did Ezekiel see? Who remembers? That boy saw that boy saw visions of God, is what he said. Yeah, he saw some visions. You remember he saw he saw he saw the beast. You know what I'm saying? They had four darn faces and and and, and four wings. You know what I'm saying? They had, they had legs like calves, like cows. And then they were moving side to side. They didn't break their ranks. You know what I'm saying? The whole, you know what I'm saying? They moving side to side. You know what I'm saying? Stayed, stayed in line with each other. What else? He saw a throne. Yeah, they had, when their wings were flapping, it made, it made noise. Like it was a whole bunch of people talking. Right? So that's that noise that you hear when you go to a choir or something like that. And they also had that wheel. Remember, it was a wheel inside of a wheel, and the outside of it had had looked like it had eyeballs all over it. Right? And that thing was moving along with them. Then after that, they saw a little a little space over their head, and that thing was like clear like crystal. You know what I'm saying? And they said when they looked through that thing, guess what they saw? A darn throne sitting on top of it. They said on the throne, that thing was like fire. You know what I'm saying? And so they started to look at him and they say, that's where the most high was. He was saying, that's where he was. And after that, he felt weak, fell down. You know what I'm saying? Then after that, he saw uh, he saw a vision and he had a vision about, you know what I'm saying, words that was written on a scroll, on a roll, you know what I'm saying, on a book. You know what I'm saying? And he had to eat it. And when he ate it, what did it take, taste like? Honey. Tastes like honey, right? That thing was sweet, just like honey. But then when he went away, you know what I'm saying, how did he feel after that? Bitter. He felt bitter after that, right? After he ate it, and it felt like Mayala. Sit down. Okay, just have a seat, please. But um, he uh he felt bitter after that. You know what I'm saying? After a while, you know what I'm saying? He walked away. That thing felt bitter, right? Then what was the vision he saw after that in chapter three? Who remember what happened in chapter three? Chapter three, remember the Most High God started giving them some real direction after that. Y'all remember chapter three? He told him he gonna be like a what? Didn't he have to keep keep watch? Mm. He's gonna be a watchman, right? And he said, Most High God told him, if if the Most High God tell you that this man sinned and you don't tell him, his blood is on you. It's your fault if he die, right? But if you tell him, then it's his fault if he die. Then he started letting us know about how he look at sin. He said, Man, if you sin your whole life. But then you turn away from your sin and you righteous. What do you do with your sin? What do you think about your sin? You forget, forget about all it. about your sin, don't he? But then he said, if you righteous all your life and then you commit a sin, then what happened? I won't remember. You forget about all that darn righteousness. So we talked a little bit about it's about how you end. It's about your last. It's, it's about how you live up until the end of your life. And a lot of us try to play around. A lot of people try to play around like, yeah, I'm going to get it in. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to send it up. And at the last minute, right before I take my last breath, I'm going to try to be righteous. And most high God ain't mocked. Right? So a lot of people do. We think to assume that you could do that is to assume that you have control. So the best we ought to do, just because it takes a lot of, like, you, you, you have to get yourself co correct to make a life that is righteous. Right? It's not, like, it's not like something that you could just turn on and turn off. When you think you can turn it on and turn off, you double-minded. And that's unrighteous in itself. Right? 
So you have to make sure you build up the habits that it takes to become a righteous man or a righteous woman. And then doing that, that means you got to start whenever the most high God give you breath, your your breath, every every ounce and every fiber in your body is, to, is supposed to love Yah. Right. And when you put everything in your body to love Yah, then you got to turn away from all sin. Turn away from some sins. No, turn away from all them things. Get that. Get all them things up out of you. Right. So that was uh that was Ezekiel that we read about. Remember Ezekiel, he was he went into captivity, right? So he went into Ezekiel went into captivity um around the same time. I mean after the time that Jeconiah went. Because you remember Jeconiah, I mean not Jeconiah, uh uh Jehoiachin, right? Another name they call him is Jeconiah, but you know what I'm saying? We 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 we've been referring to him as Jehoiachin. So Jehoiachin, he you know what I'm saying, he went into uh captivity. And uh, a lot of the people went into captivity, like Daniel and all that. And so throughout that time, people were going into captivity. So at this time, Zedekiah was set up, right? Because remember, we talked about we talked about um, Nebuchadnezzar. You remember Nebuchadnezzar last week or the week before last? Nebuchadnezzar, he was running the show, top dog. Thought he was running it. Daniel, he captured Daniel. Daniel started, you know what I'm saying, giving him dreams and all this stuff, giving him, interpreting his dreams for him. And then Most High God made Nebuchadnezzar real low, didn't he? Remember, he turned him to an animal. He was running around eating with the animals, with the worms. As Isaiah described, he was eating with the worms. Then after, after a while, after I think it was seven years, he looked up and, and the Most High God gave him back his reason. He gave him back his understanding. Right? So Nebuchadnezzar was the king. But during the midst of all this time, you had Ezekiel prophesying. Right? And then during the midst of that time also, you had uh, Zedekiah who became king. So let's let's actually start there. Let's go to uh, let's go to Second Kings, Second uh, Kings chapter twenty four. Second Kings chapter twenty four. Give me like verse, uh, I don't know, verse 15, verse, what I want. Start me like Je Jehoiachin. I want to recap on Jehoiachin first. It shouldn't be a whole lot. Uh, verse 8. Verse 8. This is, uh, mm -hmm. 8? That far? Oh, yeah. So give me, uh, give me 2 Kings chapter 24, verse 8. What does the book say? And Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he began to reign. Uh-huh. And he reigned in Jerusalem three months. And his mother's name was Nehushta, the daughter of El Nathan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, according to all that his father had done. Mm -hmm. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city, and his servants did besiege it. And Jehoiakim, mm -hmm. the king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon, he and his mother and his servants and his princes and his officers. So notice Babylon. the people that Nebuchadnezzar took. He took his servants and his princes. He took his mama. You know what I'm saying? So he took, he took, he took, he took the royalty, right? He took the people of upper class, right? You remember Daniel confirmed that for us in the first chapter of Daniel. That's what it said. He said, man, it took the, he took the people that was of upper class. And after that, he brought them in. You remember Daniel, he brought them in and he said, listen, this is what y'all going to eat. Y'all going to clean yourself up and y'all going to do this for three years. He told him you do it for three years. Then y'all can stand in front of the king. And you remember Daniel was like, listen, we're not going to eat that food. Right. What Daniel say? Remember, remember Dan Daniel was like, look, no, nah, we're not about to eat no unclean food. Just give me the pulse. Right. And the pulse is, you know, you kind of had like a, a vegetarian diet. You got to look at it like a vegan or a vegetarian diet. So you find even a lot of people right now, they call it a, a Daniel fast. Right. They'll look at it and they'll say, OK, well, Daniel, he 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 refused to eat. Right. For X amount of time, he refused to eat the meat. He just ate the pulse. So they say, OK, well, we just gonna eat fruits and vegetables. And that's a Daniel fast. But remember, did Daniel call it a fast? No. Nah. What was Daniel doing? He just didn't want to eat unclean meat. If he was just keeping the law. Meat, if they had clean meat, he would have ate it. It wasn't like he wasn't he was against eating meat. He just wasn't going to eat no unclean meat. That's right. Daniel was just keeping the law. Yeah. Yeah, I said that's what happened. That's what get missed with tradition, right? A lot of times people just you you have a tradition in Christianity, they call it the Daniel fast. But what gets missed is 
Really, he was just keeping the law. Right. But if you don't value the law, then you just start calling it a fast. Right. Most like God wouldn't have looked at what Daniel did as Daniel afflict, a fast is you afflicting yourself. Right. You punishing yourself. Right. That that's not that's not how the most High God. We don't have no documentation in the book saying that that's how the most High God viewed it or that's how Daniel viewed it. He didn't view it as a afflicting itself. He just looked at it like I'm just going to keep the law. That's that's standard. Right. But it's a blessing in keeping the law. A lot of people don't realize. Uh, grab Ezekiel. I'm not Ezekiel. Uh, Exodus chapter uh, 15. Give me Exodus chapter 15. Give me verse. Might need some help. Give me the last verse. Give me the give me give me the third to the last verse. This is Exodus chapter 15 and whatever the third to the last verse is. 23. Man, I was gonna guess like 23, 22, too. Uh, give me Exodus chapter 15, verse 22. Because Mel said 23, I got to go one before. You know what I'm talking about? Mel, don't be trying to teach no Bible now. <laughs> so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. They Look, went so out. Moses brought Israel through the Red Sea, right? That's how he got us here. Y'all, this stuff got to be vivid in our mind. Most high God got us here by having us cross over a big old sea of water. And then he split that thing right in front of us. Then we walk around on, on dry ground. As we going over, that thing swallowed up the Egyptians. That thing got to be vivid in our mind. That's the, that's the start of our nation. That's how we started, right? Then we go in and then. You know what I'm saying? Fast forward, we disobey the Most High God. Romans start taking us over. They push us into Africa. Muslims start to enslave us. Then the Muslims sold us out to the Europeans. Then they discovered a, a America. And then they sold us out and made us slaves all over the Americas. All over the world, really, but all over the Americas. Right? So that's like, but our story starts when Moses brought us out of the Red Sea. And then we'll watch what happened next. They went out into the wilderness to, of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And Look, they, they came, didn't find any water, but watch this. When they came to Merah, they could not drink the waters of Merah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name mm -hmm. of it was called Mer Merah. Mm -hmm. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which he had cast into the waters, and the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. And said, if you will diligently hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah thy God, and will do and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, what happened? All his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which he I said, I'll do what? Egyptians. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. So now listen, if you are in captivity, right? He's saying that by keeping the law. The stuff that was in your captivity, you won't get any of those diseases. That's what he's talking to us about, right? And all we got to do is do what? Let's read it again. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah thy God, and will do that mm -hmm. which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am Yahuwah that healed thee. Right? So if we look at it, Keeping the law is what the Most High God gave us as a way to heal ourselves, right? So a lot of times we do a Daniel fast or we do, you know, we do this or we do that, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, that's fine, right? Do whatever you want to call it. It's not a fast, right? What Daniel was doing is keeping the law. We ought to, we ought to just say, maybe let's keep the law because there's a promise attached to it. We've been talking about on our fellowship call, we talk about it often, right? The promises that come with the law and the promises that come with Yahushua. Because it's two different things, right? If you want healing in your flesh, in this flesh that you got right now, right? You don't want to wait until you, look, you listening to Yahushua, you wait until you die for just about everything that he promised you. You have to understand that. Yahushua didn't promise you too much for this life. Everything he, almost everything he talking to you about, you got to die before you see it. That's not what that's not what Moses gave. Moses gave us stuff for our flesh. For right now, Moses gave us stuff that'll help us out for right now. Moses is telling us, listen, if you keep these laws, 
I ain't going to put them diseases on y'all. All we got to do is keep the law. That's, that's something you ask yourself, why am I going to keep the law? That's one reason. As a Christian, you looking at it, you looking like, why would I keep the law? Law done away with. That's a reason. Law ain't done away with. That's how you get your healing. Not by just cutting out meat out of your diet. You know what I'm saying? You go on a, you go on a diet for, for 20, 21 days. How long they be doing it? 21 days? You doing it right now? Goodness gracious, I'm just surrounded by Christians. You know that she just eating vegetables, huh? Yeah, see, I got that. I got that. They got, they got her too. Goodness gracious. I'm about to call her right now. You know what I mean? But that's what happens, right? That's what happens, right? You do it in this 21 day, ask one of them where they read it. Where'd they read it? Nowhere. But guess what? This pastor said it, then this pastor adopted it, and everybody adopted it. And at the beginning of the year, somehow, I don't know where they got the date from. I don't know, but it's a tradition. And that thing get bigger every year. And every year, I'm the lone person saying, that's not a fast. You know what I'm saying? They, they, everybody looking at me like, boy, shut up. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but it's, now nah, he just, he's just keeping the law. You know what I'm saying? He just, all right, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, go ahead. Don't eat meat if you don't want to. Right? But it's a diet. So you go on a diet for 21 days, and that's good if you want to lose a little weight, maybe. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to drop a couple pounds, that's good. But if you're trying to heal your body, right? You're trying to be great in the kingdom, uh, you got to do a little bit more than that. Right? You just do a little bit more than that. All right? Let's go to, um, let's go to, uh, uh, what, what did we leave off of? Second, Second Kings chapter 24, verse 8. Uh, verse 12. Second Kings chapter 24, what verse? 12. This second Kings chapter 24, verse 12, verse 12. What page number? Who it look like that's what I do? I ain't gonna say it no more. Second Kings chapter 24. Verse 12, repeat it to yourself quietly. I'm wrong with it. All right, let's go. What the book say? Oh, you ain't got it either? Or are you on mute? Uh, I'm here. All right. <laughs> yeah, you need me to repeat it too. <laughs> Can't buy good help around. You know, you could do this thing yourself if you're going to keep on, you know what I'm saying? Look, see, that's his headache talk. <laughs> <laughs> and Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon. He and his mother and his servants and his princes and his officers and the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign. And he carried out thence all the treasuries of the house of Yahuwah and the treasuries of the king house and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold which Solomon, king of Israel, had made in the temple of the Lord, as the Lord had said. And he carried away all Jerusalem and all the princes and all the mighty men of valor, even 10,000 captives and all the craftsmen and smiths. None remain except the poorest sort of the people of, of the land. And he carried away Jehoiakim to Babylon and the king's mother, and the king's wives, and his officers, and the mighty of the land. Those carried he into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. And all the men of might, even 7,000, even 7,000 craftsmen and smiths, a thousand, and all that were strong and apt for war, even them the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon. And the king mm -hmm. of Babylon made Madaniah his father's brother, king in his stead. And changed Look, his so Madaniah was father. made king instead of uh Jehoiachin, right? But what what happened to Madaniah? Let's see who Madaniah is. And the king of Babylon made Madaniah his father's brother king in his stead and changed his name to Zedekiah. Right? So Madaniah then had a name changed to Zedekiah. Right? And remember Nebuchadnezzar is the one who chose to have his name changed. He changed him to Zedekiah. So now Zedekiah is the king. Let's let's hear about Zedekiah a little bit. And Zedekiah was 21 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. 
And mm-hmm. his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. Mm-hmm. And through the anger, and through the anger of the Lord, it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah until he had cast him out from his presence. That Zedekiah right? rebelled so, against the king of Babylon. So Zedekiah, while he was the king, he didn't please the Most High God. Right? Most High God grew even more angry with Zedekiah. And this is what Jeremiah, so this is who Jeremiah had to deal with, right? Because at this point, remember, Jeremiah had talked to Josiah, right? Everybody up there, he talked to Josiah, he talked to Jehoahaz, he talked to Jehoiakim, and he talked to Jehoiachin. Now, you have Zedekiah in there. These are all the different kings that Jeremiah had to deal with. Have one of them listened to him? Outside of outside of uh, Josiah, not one of them listened to him. Right. So now let's let's pick up at uh, Jeremiah chapter twenty nine. Let's just kind of see how he's talking to the people. It's Jeremiah chapter twenty nine. Jeremiah chapter twenty twenty nine. We're gonna start at verse one. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captive, and to the priests, and to the prophets, to all the people from whom Behum Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Mm-hmm. After that, Jeconiah the king, and the queen, and the eunuchs, and the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, and the carpenters and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem. By the hand of Elash, the son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah king of Judah, Sent unto Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Look, said, so Zedekiah sent some people on to Nebuchadnezzar, right? Watch this. Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that were carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands. That right. So Zedekiah sent folks over to 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 uh, Babylon and then Jeremiah was like, yo, 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 take this letter with you. And so in this letter, he's reading it to him and it's saying is like, listen, make yourselves real comfortable over there. That's pretty much what he tells them. I know y'all got captured. Y'all got gaffled up. Y'all got taken into captivity. Go ahead. It's all right. Make yourself real comfortable over there. Build houses. Go ahead. Find somebody to marry your son. Find somebody to marry your your uh your daughters. It's gonna be all right. Everything gonna be good. But be real comfortable because this house is about to be for a little while. Watch this. Keep going. That they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused whether I have caused you to be carried away captive. And right. He says, seek the peace of the city. In other words. Don't try to don't try to put your hand with their enemies and try to get them conquered. You look at a lot of the Hebrews, they looking over there and you got the, you know what I'm saying? You got, you got, you got like the enemy, like, oh yeah, Russia gonna tear this place down. You know what I'm saying? This, that, another. That's not what the most high God told us to do. You know what I'm saying? China, man, China, China gonna tear America down. Babylon coming down. That's not what the book told us to do. Right? It didn't say look at the enemy. He said, sick the peace of this place. Most our God, we he gave us prophecy of what's gonna happen. That ain't our job. Our job is to seek the peace of the plague. As long as it's peace, we got a way out. It's a little relief for us. Keep going, watch this. Seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall you have peace. For thus says Yahuwah of hosts, the God of Israel. What a Hebrew gonna say if they catch you praying for America? Right now, if we just said. Let's just, everybody, let's just hold our hands, circle in prayer, right? And let's say a prayer for America. As, as Hebrew, right? We are Israelites, Yahuwah, and we serve Yahushua. We talking like that. We serve Yahushua. We keep the law, statutes. You know, Hebrew love some law. Listen, all you got to do, you know, like Christian, you know how Christians say, Jesus, God is good. What, what they going to say? They're like, Jesus and that. All the time. Right? 
Jesus is God. Jesus is good. All the little, all the little, you know what I'm saying? Christian catchphrases, you know what the, the Hebrew one is? Law, statutes, commandment. If you say that around a Hebrew, you just go up to a Hebrew and be like, law, statutes, commandments. It, it ain't even got to make sense what you're talking about. Law, statutes, commandments. Just say law, statute, commandment to a Hebrew. They're going to be like, yeah, buddy. Law, statute, commandment. You know what I'm saying? That's they, that's they little catchphrase. The Hebrews, boy, you can law, statute, commandment, they butt to death. they would be none the wiser. It don't matter what you're talking about. Just slip law, statute, commandment in there. They're going to trust you. They'll be like, oh, that's a brother. You know what I'm saying? That's a brother. That's a good brother right there. They don't care what you're talking about. Right? What were we talking about before this? I'll get to that. Seek the peace of the city. In oh, the so yeah, if we circle around, we we praying and we talking about law, statue, commandment, Lord, and Yahuwah. You can't say Lord with a Hebrew though. They're gonna be like, no, that's an ancient, that's an ancient Roman God or something. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna hit you with something. You can't say Lord around a Hebrew. You gotta say, you know what I'm saying? You gotta say Yahuwah, you know what I'm saying, Yah, you know what I'm saying? Depending on how they pronounce it, you gotta be you gotta take it easy. Cause they they not all of them pronounce it Yahuwah now. You know what I'm saying? Some of them pronounce it, you know what I'm saying? What's the what's the uh how the uh how them one boys pronounce theirs? Mm -hmm. They do a high a higher yah a higher or something like that. Yeah, it's like don't be making fun of them now. But they 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 be making a high they, I think they do a higher yah a higher is how they do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of them would just say a higher. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you the safest way, you just say yah. But I saw something on Twitter, they is like, I feel it's disrespectful to call you uh, call the most high yah. I was like, dang it, I can't win out here. I gotta find like a, a way that don't offend nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm but anyway, you know what I'm saying? So you got Yah, you know what I'm saying? Be like, Yah, you know what I'm saying? On top of praying for our, you know what I'm saying, our forefathers that came before us and they sin, you know what I'm saying, and don't remember they sin. Yah, we also want to pray for America. I guarantee you the whole record going, you know what I'm saying? All the Hebrews standing around, they gonna look at like pray for what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we just like to play, pray for all the nations that took us into captivity. Just give them peace, y'all. They're going to be looking like, what did you just say? You know what I'm saying? Because they don't play that thing. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of stuff built. Rightfully so now. Don't get me wrong. We should have something built up against these nations that took our people captive. Don't get me wrong now. But that's not how the book told us to handle it. Most High God said, when I take you away to the place of your captivity, pray for them people. Seek the peace of those nations. We saw Daniel serving Nebuchadnezzar while he's doing this, while he's tearing down our people, tearing down and stealing everything out of our temple. His Gentile fingertips took their nasty claws and touched our holy things, our set-apart vessels. He put his nasty, dirty, nasty, heathen hands on it and took it back to his land. Of course we're going to look at that thing and be like, what? That's foolishness for us, right? Nevertheless, what Daniel do the whole time? Serve him. He interpreted his dream for him. He had to tell him that, yeah, most High God gave it to you. You the top of the top. He seeks the peace of his nation. He helped him guide his nation. This is, uh, keep going. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams, which you have caused to be dreamed. Mm -hmm. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not. Right. He's saying, look, and they lying to you. Everybody who telling you it's going to be all right. Them boys is lying to you. Keep going. For thus says the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you. And causing you to return to this place. Right? So when did the 70 year count start? They went over. It started right there. Right? Because remember, this letter is going out right after Jehoiachin got taken captive along with some of the upper echelons of the people. Yeah. Not everybody was taken captive and our temple hasn't been destroyed yet. Our temple going to be destroyed in Zedekiah's time. Right? So this is right, right at the start of Zedekiah's time, right? He took some of our people. That's when the 70 years starts. It didn't start with literally our whole, we never really was completely out of land, like down to the person, but it didn't start when the mass majority of our people was out of the land. Right now, it's still a lot of people in our land. We still got a king in our land. 
right? So the 70 years started when Jehoiachin was taken and then the count begins. He said, look, just wait 70 years. I'm going to be back to see about y'all. Right? I say that because I was, I was, I noticed, I didn't notice this at first, but I was talking to a brother about, about some of these things. And I was, I was telling them about how, you know what I'm saying? We're going to read about it, but I was telling them about how some of the people that was around when, um, when the new temple, the foundation of the new temple was laid, they was crying because they was looking at this don't compare anything to, you know what I'm saying? The old temple. And then, you know what I'm saying? We got into a discussion about, oh, well, you, you, they would have had to be at least 70 years old. So they, for them to see it, they would have had to be a couple years old at least to see it and then add 70 years to that because that's when they would have got taken. So these people would have been super old. And so that's when I noticed, I'm like, oh, well, no, that's not necessarily the case. The count started well before, you know what I'm saying? The temple was destroyed. So it's a lot of people that would have been much younger than 70 that still saw the temple, right? They saw the temple in this original state. Then they saw it get taken down. So this is, uh, keep going. But thus says the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and mm -hmm. causing you to return to this place. Mm -hmm. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says Yahuwah. Thoughts of peace. Look, this is, look Christians love this. But who is he talking to? Talking to the captives. Babylon. He's talking to the people that went into captivity. Right? He's telling them, in, look, go ahead and make the most of your captivity. Because he says, I know the thoughts that I have for you. Watch this. Says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you mm -hmm. an expected end. Then shall you come upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, says Yahuwah. And I will turn away your captivity and will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says Yahuwah. And I will bring you again into this place whence I called you, caused you to be carried away captive. Mm -hmm. Because you have said, the Lord has raised us up, prophets in Babylon. Know that this, know that thus says Yahuwah of the king that sits upon the throne of David and of all the people that dwell in the city and your brethren that are not gone forth with you into captivity. Thus says the Lord, the Lord of hosts, behold, I will send upon them the sword and famine and pestilence and will make them like vile figs that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. And I will persecute them with the sword, with the famine, and with the pestilence, and with and will deliver, and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth to be a curse and an astonishment and a hissing and a reproach among all the nations where I've driven them. Because they have not hearkened unto my word, says Yahuwah, which I sent unto them by my servants, the prophets, rising up early, sending them. But ye will not hear, says Yahuwah. Hear ye therefore the word of the Lord, all ye of the captivity whom I have sent from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, of Ahab, the son of Holiah, and of Zedekiah, the son of Messiah, which prophesy a lie unto you in my name. Behold, Look, I will he said, they them. prophesy a lie unto you in my name. Watch this. I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall slay them before your eyes. And of them shall be taken up a curse by all the captivity of Judah, which are in Babylon, saying, The Lord make you make thee like Zedekiah and like Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire. Because they have committed villainy in Israel and have committed adultery with their neighbors' wives and have spoken lying words in my name, which I have not commanded them. Even I know, even I know and am a witness, says Yahuwah. Right. So you look at you look at Yahuwah and he's sending a message by way of Jeremiah as a letter, right, to the people in Babylon. Right. And that's because it was so many lying prophets that ended up going and they was like, Yeah, now this thing about to be all right. We about to get taken home. Most high God gonna turn this thing around. And it's like, no, nah, that's not the case. Most high God was like, No, 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 get comfortable there. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and build you some houses, take care of yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't be thinking it's about to be over. You got 70 years you gotta do that. Right. It's a very long time that they got to sit out, right? So let's go, to, uh, let's look at Ezekiel because Ezekiel was one of the prophets that went into the captivity, right? So Ezekiel was into the captivity. Remember we started, he was at the river Kabar in the captivity with the captives, 
right? And he was a, he was amongst or he was of the priests. This is uh, Ezekiel. We left off at chapter three. Let's pick it up at verse. I mean, chapter four. It's Ezekiel chapter four. I just want y'all to see what Ezekiel had to go through while he was in captivity. Thou also, son of man, take thee a tile and lay it before thee and portray upon it the city, even Jerusalem, and lay siege against it and build a fort against it and cast a mount against it. Set right? So he had to take a tile, right? To think of like a square, you know what I'm saying, block. He had to take that, that block. And then he had to try to write an image to have it portray that it's our city, Jerusalem, Right? Then after that, he had to he had to kind of take little artifacts and then make it look like it lays a, it was laying siege against Jerusalem. So he pretty much had to had to you ever you know what I'm saying in school y'all gonna see that y'all got to you ever put together like a poster board or something like that. A poster board you did a, doing a poster board. Sometimes you got you know what I'm saying get fine stuff and you got to you know what I'm saying kind of staple it on there or whatever or glue it on there or draw it little sign. I don't care nothing about the pet. I'm talking about the darn poster board. You know what I'm saying? So you got a poster board, you put it on there, and you you depict you portraying something, right? So in the same way, this is what Ezekiel had to do. He had to put the he had to get the tile. He had to portray the city and that it's being besieged. You know what besieged mean? Besieged mean that so you ever seen? Imagine you got big old walls, right? You got a city and you got big old walls on the city, but I want to break down your walls and I want to get you. I want to get everybody in your city and I want y'all to surrender to me, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take I'm gonna take some large artifact, I mean some large uh, machinery, and I'm gonna ram it up against your walls until your walls break, and I'm gonna set your walls on fire, shooting bare bow and arrows over your walls, and so I'm gonna surround your whole city and all your walls, and I'm gonna keep hitting your walls until they break down. But while I'm doing that, I'm not letting anything go in or anything come out. So if you try to come out of your city, I'm either kill you or take you captive. And if anybody tries to come in to deliver y'all, because everybody got to eat, right? So that means that somebody got to go outside of the city and go hunt or go get water or go get supplies or go get whatever, right? So I'm going to make sure that nobody can bring in supplies or, or money or food or anything from outside the city. I'm going to stop it. You see you coming in like, no, 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 I kill your butt. You better get back, right? So I prevent everything from coming in, everything from going out. What's going to happen to the people in, on the inside? That's right. They're not going to be able to eat or drink nothing. So eventually they're going to run out of food. And eventually they're going to run out of uh, water. And when that happens, what happens? People are going to start dying. But what are you going to do before you die? Yeah, that's exactly what happens a lot of times in the book. But before that happens, what might you do? No, you might give up. You might be like, no, 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 no. All right, man, you got it. We give up. Go ahead, take me. You know what I'm saying? Just give me some food. Right? Because a lot of times we're not trying to kill. Nebuchadnezzar wasn't trying to kill everybody. Nebuchadnezzar was trying to get people to give up and then come to his nation in the servo. Right? So he's looking at it like, I'm going to kill all y'all if y'all don't give up. But if y'all give up, it's over. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even, you know what I'm saying? We ain't even got to, we ain't got to keep doing this. It's over if y'all give up. So that's what they were dealing with, right? They're dealing with, they're dealing with the fact that Nebuchadnezzar was besieging the whole land. So now this is what Ezekiel had to portray because this hasn't happened yet. It, well, it happened, but the instance that Ezekiel is trying to portray hasn't happened yet. So Ezekiel had to draw a picture, a little poster board to try to portray that. So when people look at it, be like, oh, that looked like Jerusalem being besieged, right? Now watch what he had to do with it. Keep going. Moreover, take thou the, unto thee an iron pan and set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city. And set right? So you took the city. You portray it, and then you take an iron pan, and you put it, and that iron pan represents the wall to the city. Watch this. Set thy face against it, and it shall be besieged, and thou shalt lay siege against it. Thus shall a sign to the house of Israel. Thus, this shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Lie thou also upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it. According right? To so he said, lie thou also upon thy what? 
Left side. Thy left side. Which side is that? Don't none of y'all know y'all learn left and right? Goodness gracious. It's going to be this side, right? So now listen. He had this tile. It depicted Jerusalem. He got the, the, the pan, right? The metal pan. And that represents the wall. And he said, set your face against it. So he had to, had to put his face against it. In other words, he got to look flat at it. And that represents the most high God face be, being against us, right? Then he said, that is the besieged. Then he said, lay on your left side. So Ezekiel, this is a man. He had, he outside in captivity. He had to lay down on his left side, right? So he laying on the ground on his left side like this. You know what I'm saying? Just comfortable like that. Then he got the towel. He holding that up. He got the pan holding that up, and he's setting his face against it like this, right? That's the picture. This a this a grown man laying on the on the ground on his side, holding all this stuff up with his holding a little poster board and the pan up, right? Keep going. Watch this. Lady I want y'all. That's just like that. And lay Watch the iniquity this. of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon it. Thou shalt bear their iniquity. Mm -hmm. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of the days. Watch this. 390 days so that thou bear 390 the days he had to lay right there on this side. How long is 390 days? How long is a year? 365. This year is a what? According to these people, they call it a leap year, right? So in a leap year, they say 366 days according to their year. Right, they do that because the most I got added a day to the year. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? You got now you got to do you got to figure it out. You have to make that thing right. But you know what I'm saying? They call this the leap year, right? But it's 365 days in this in these people year, right? So if you got 360 days or 365 days or 64 days, however you want to reckon it, right? He did that and some because he had to do 300 and what? 390 days. So imagine laying on your side for 390 day for a year straight. You have to lay on your side. You know why? Because God told you to. And why did God told you that? Tell you that? Just so you can make a representation to the people of what's about to happen to them. So now you got to imagine what it's like. You laying on your side because it ain't like it's it ain't like it ain't like you in the middle of Times Square and everybody saying, hey, look at Ezekiel. No, you probably you in captivity. So you probably like just all on the side of a, you know what I'm saying, on the street and somebody walking past you and they looking at you. How they going to look at you? Like this guy's a bum. Yeah. But he had to every day lay on his side for 390 days, his left side, 390 days. Watch this. Keep going. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days. Right. So he said, after you done laying on your left side for 390 days, do another 40 days on your right side. Right. So it's well over a year, almost a year and a half. This boy is sitting down. This man is sitting down and he got to lay on his sides. Right. So he had to do 40 days for uh, Jerusalem. Keep going. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Therefore, thou shalt set thy face toward the siege of Jerusalem and thine arms shall be uncovered. And thou shalt prophesy against it. And behold, I will lay bands upon thee. And thou shalt not turn thee from one side to another till thou hast entered, ended the days of thy siege. Take thou also unto thee wheat and barley and beans and lentils and millet and pitches and put them in one vessel and make thee bread thereof according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon thy side. 390 days shalt thou eat thereof. And thy meat, which thou shalt eat, shall be by weight, 20 shekels a day. From time to time shalt thou eat it. Thou shalt drink also water by measure, the sixth part of a hen. From time to time shall you drink. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. And thou shalt bake it with dung that comes out of man in their sight. Right? So now he told them, not only are you laying on your side, and not only are you doing it for 390 days, then following that up with 40 days on your right hand side. Right. But on top of that, I want you to take lentils and beans and all this different stuff. You got to crush this stuff up and make a bread out of it. Right. And then after you make that bread, you got to eat it little by little. 
right? Little by little. And then you get you a little bit of water and you got to drink it little by little, right? Because that represents what it's like in the siege, right? When you're in the middle of the siege, you can't just eat whatever you want. Everybody got a ration because it's like ain't no food going out, ain't nothing going out, and ain't no food coming in. Ain't nobody going to help us. So now whatever we got here, we got to make it small pieces so that everybody can survive on it as long as possible until we buy us some time. So that's what now he got to do. He got to eat it little by little. And got to drink little by little. Right? But then he said to cook the bread. Guess how he had to cook it? Why are everybody walking around? What y'all got going on? Right? He said, why every, why he said, he said, he said, listen, what you got to do to cook this bread is you got to put it, you got to cook it with what? What did he just say? You shall bake it with dung that comes out of man in their sight. Man's poop. That's how you got to cook. So you got to light man's poop on fire. And that's how you got to cook it. That's the, that's the, you know, like I use coals when I'm, when I'm cooking, you know what I'm saying? I put the coals in there, light them things up. You know what I'm saying? Then I put some over the hot grill. Now imagine that, except it's man's poop instead of coals. And you put it in there. Watch what Ezekiel say. And the Lord said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whether I will drive them. Then said I, Oh, Lord God, behold, my soul has not been polluted. For from my youth up even until now have I not eaten of that which dieth of itself or is torn in pieces. Neither came there abominable flesh into my mouth. Right? So he said, listen, Yahuwah, give me a little break now. I ain't never ate nothing unclean. He said, look, I've never ate nothing that died of itself, right? Or that was torn. In other words, I never ate like an animal that it died without me sacrificing it or without me killing it myself, right? He just walk out and he see a dead animal. He's like, no, nah, that's against my law. I can't eat that. We can't eat nothing. We can't eat nothing that we just walk out and we find it already dead. We got to see how it dies for us, to, for us to eat it, right? So he said, I never ate nothing unlawful. Nor have I ate abominable. I ain't never ate no pork, no darn shrimp. He's saying, I've never ate none of this stuff. I have not been polluted. So he's begging. He's like, man, I got it. I'll lay on my left side for 390 days now. I'll lay on my, on my right side for 40 days. I eat the little nasty bread, but you can't make me cook it with man's poop. That, that'll defile me. I've never done this. Remember, Ezekiel is a priest. He's like, man, I ain't never, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never done nothing like this. So why would the most high God say to him? Then he said unto me, Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. Right? So he said, okay, instead of man's poop, use cow poop instead. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you a break. Use cow poop instead. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment that they may want bread and water and be astonished one with another and consume away for their iniquity. And thou, oh, for their iniquity. And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor and cause it to pass upon thy head and upon thy beard. Then take- What chapter is this? Five. Okay, so now we're going into chapter five. He said, take you a sharp knife, right? And let it pass upon your head and your beard. This is Ezekiel. I just laid down for a year and a half. You know what I'm talking about? Eating bull crap, literally. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Sitting there eating this stuff. I lay down for a year and a half. I get up. Most of my guys say, good job, boy. Now take a razor. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and shave your head and your beard. If somebody asked me to shave my beard, you know how distraught I would be? It's Ezekiel. He's looking like, not again. He looked like, go ahead, shave it. Go ahead, get you a razor. Watch what you have to do. Then take the balances to weigh and divide the hair. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city when the days of the siege are fulfilled. And thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife. And a third part thou shalt scatter in the wind, and I will draw out a sword after them. Right? So he said, look, you shave your hair. Bundle it up, right? You got all your hair. You got it all in one bundle. He said, put it on the weight. Get a weight, and you weigh it. It's like, okay, it weighed two pounds or whatever it weighed, right? Because he got some nap. You know what I'm saying? So he weighed, you know what I'm saying? Weigh some weight. 
Then he said, okay, divide that into three. You take it and you divide it into three equal parts. Okay, that weighs the same as that one. That weighs, okay, so they all weigh the same thing. Cool, right? After we find out they all weigh the same thing, most like God said, okay, now take the first one, burn it in fire. This is his hair he just cut off. Burn that thing in fire. The first, the first, it's three of them. Burn the first one in fire, right? Okay, you burn it in the fire. You know what that represents? The hair represents the people of Israel, right? He said that we was going to get burnt up in fire. So that's what happened. That's what's going to end up happening to our people, right? A lot of them going to get burnt up in fire. Our land is going to get burnt up and all that. So he said, burn them in fire. What was the next one? Then he said, grab a knife. When the days right? of, and thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife. Right? So you take a knife. He said, you smite about it with a knife. In other words, he's saying, go like this. So he already shaved it off. He got the bundle of hair just like this. Then he said, just start chopping it up. You know what I'm saying? Start chopping it up to a knife. You know what I'm saying? I like to believe, you know what I'm saying? You ever seen like a chef? You know what I'm saying? Take the thing and you do all that. I like to believe he put it down on something and he just, just chopping it on up, right? So then he chop it up. What does that represent? That represents us in wartime, right? The Babylonians is going to come and they're going to chop us up. Right. They're going to kill us. Right. Everybody who don't get a self over, they're going to kill us. Then the next the next section. Right. So it was the first one was fire. The second one was the knife. The third one was what? The third part thou shalt scatter in the wind. We're going to take this and we're going to scatter it in the wind. Right. This gets scattered in the wind. What does that represent? That's running away. Mm, not quite. Right. It, 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 it's us trying to escape. Right. All the other things. So it's some people that's going to get ex that, 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 you know, they're going to think they escape it and then they're going to be chased also. Right. Watch this. Keep. He's going to tell you. And scatter in the wind and I will draw out a sword after them. Hey, <laughs> you, look, look. you thought you got away, huh? I'm going to pull a sword out. of So you always on the run or you getting killed. Right. Keep going. Watch this. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number and bind them in thy skirts. So now. Of all these different groups, you take just a couple hairs. You know what I'm saying? Maybe some hair gets stuck on your hand or something. You know what I'm saying? You know how you got hair and it gets stuck on your hand. Sometimes you get hair and it gets stuck in your mouth. You like, you know what I'm saying? So you got you got this hair kind of stuck. He said just a couple, a few in number. He said then put them in your belt. Just hide them in your belt. Right? What does that mean, Ezekiel? Let's see. And bind them in thy skirts. Then take of them again and cast them into the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire. For thereof shall a fire come forth into the house of Israel. All right. So he said, even the ones that thought they were going to make it, they was hidden. Like, oh, we made it. He said, then take those and then burn them in the fire. Right. So he's showing you ain't nobody. Gonna make it. You're going to have people that's on the run. That's the only ones that's going to make it. The ones that got scattered. They on the run, but you making it under duress. You constantly running for your life, trying to escape these people that's trying to get you. All right, keep going. Then take of them again and cast them into the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire. For thereof shall a fire come forth out of, out of, into the, all the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. And she has changed my potential witness more than the nation, and my statutes more than the countries that are about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you multiplied more than the nations that are about you and have not walked in my statutes, my judgments, Neither have done to the judgments of the nations that are about round about you. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, even I am against thee, and will execute judgments on the midst of thee in the sight of the nations. And I will do in thee that which I have not done. And whereunto I will not do any more the like, because all thine abominations. Therefore, the fathers shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgments in thee. And the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into the winds. He said the whole remnant of thee. In other words, whoever doesn't die. When he say remnant, he's saying whoever survives and doesn't die, I'm going to scatter thee to the winds. In other words, that's the people that he scattered to the wind. That means a sword is coming out. <laughs> Somebody's chasing them. So you scattered, but you ain't just free. 
Somebody chasing you. Somebody always after you. Always feel like somebody after you. Keep going. Wherefore, uh, excuse me. Wherefore, as I live, says Yahuwah God, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things, and with all thine abominations, therefore will I also diminish thee. Neither shall my eyes spare, neither will I have any pity. Dang. The third part of thee shall die with the pestilence and with famine, and shall they be consumed in the midst of thee. And the third part of part shall fall by the sword round about thee. And I will scatter a third part into the winds, and I will draw out a sword after them. Thus my anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted, and they shall know that I am Yahuwah. I, Yahuwah, have spoken it in my zeal when I have accomplished my fury in them. <coughs> Moreover, I will make thee waste and a, and a reproach among the nations that are round about thee in the sight of all that pass by. So it shall be a repro reproach and a taunt and an in instruction and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee when I shall execute judgments in thee in anger and in fury and in furious rebukes. I, Yahuwah, have spoken it. And I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine which shall be for their destruction in which I will send to destroy you. And I will increase the famine upon you and will break your staff of bread. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts and they shall bereave thee and a pestilence and blood shall pass through thee. And I will bring the sword upon thee. I, Yahuwah, have spoken it. That's the end of the chapter? Yeah. Grab uh, Jeremiah. Give me Jeremiah chapter 24. <clears throat> All right. So that's the prophecy that, that was given to Ezekiel. Saying that, listen, it's about to be real tight. Right, he prophesying what's about to happen to Jerusalem. So we got to listen to Ezekiel. Remember, uh, Jeremiah sent the prophecy out to the people like, "Yo, read this letter for him. Look, get comfortable over there. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be all right." Because remember, the ones who got taken into captivity, that was the blessing. If you get taken into captivity, Most High God said, "I'm gonna look out for you and I'm gonna bring you back. I'm gonna bring the people back." If you try to reject uh, captivity, those are the ones that Ezekiel is talking to. But notice how. Jeremiah is in the land with the people that's rejecting captivity, and he's talking to the people that are not in the land. Right? He's talking to the he's sending the letter to the ones that's in captivity that accepted the captivity that are being blessed. Right? Then you got Ezekiel who's in captivity, and he's prophesying against the people who didn't go into captivity because they rejected it and they about to be destroyed. Right? So just notice the difference of the two. Right? Keep going. Or uh, go, uh, give me uh, Jeremiah chapter uh, 24, verse 1. The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of Yahuwah after Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters, the smiths, and from Jeru Jerusalem, and had brought them unto Babylon. Mm -hmm. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe. And the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. <clears throat> right. So figs, figs is like a fruit, right? It's a fruit. So he says one with good fruit, one with bad fruit. Right. Keep going. Then said the Lord to me, what seest thou, Joe? And I said, figs, the good mm -hmm. figs, good and, and the evil. They're evil. They cannot be eaten. They are so evil. Right. So the ones he called the evil figs are the bad ones, right? You can't even eat these things. They're poisonous. They mess around, make you sick. Keep going. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. Right? So the people that got the people that got carried away captive, the most high God sees those as good figs. So that's why Jeremiah wrote that letter to him, right? So the people that Ezekiel ta is talking about, the ones that's getting bundled up and they like the hair and they're getting chopped up, he's not talking about the ones that went into captivity. He's talking about all the people who stayed and rejected it, right? Keep going, watch this. For I will set my eyes upon them for good and will bring them again to this land and I will build them and not pull them down and I will plant them and not pluck them up 
and I will give them a heart to know me that I am Yahuwah, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. For they right? shall return unto me. With He's their telling heart. them about the new covenant. Right. So the same, the same promise that comes from us by uh accepting the word of Yahushua, he's offering that same thing to those who who accepted the captivity of Nebuchadnezzar. Y'all have to understand who Nebuchadnezzar represented. Nebuchadnezzar represented Yahushua. Right? Yahushua had not come yet. The Most High God made Nebuchadnezzar king of kings. So now, no, Nebuchadnezzar didn't think he was bringing the gospel. He wasn't talking directly to God. That's not what I'm saying, right? But he positioned Nebuchadnezzar that if you make yourself subservient to him in faith of Yah, I mean, in the faith of Yah, if you do that, then he would bless you. And now he's offering the promises of the new covenant. Read it again. Watch this. And I will give them a heart to know me. That He said, I will give them a heart to know me. Right? We haven't read it yet. But if we go to Jeremiah chapter 31, that's exactly what the new covenant promise is. Right? Keep going. I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall mm -hmm. return unto me with their whole heart. And as the evil figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Surely, thus says Yahuwah. So will I get right? fire. I want y'all to understand what, 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 what I'm saying. So, like, <clears throat> the, the people that went into captivity willingly be in, in, in observance of what the Most High God was saying through the prophet Jeremiah and the other prophets, the people that gave themselves to, to Nebuchadnezzar, those are the ones that are going to enter into the kingdom. Right? Those are the ones that they're going to die and they're going to be resurrected by Yahushua, just as the same way as those who, who, who accepted Yahushua and obey Yahushua's commandments. This is the version of what that looks like before Yahushua is alive. Right? Then you got the, the people that didn't go. Right? And it's a lot of people that look at Oh, well, why, why was the Maccabees taken out of the Bible and all that? Understand the story. We're going we gonna to talk a little bit. We, Y'all willing, we're going to talk a little bit about the Maccabees and all the, all the books that's not in the Bible. But you look at Maccabees and Tobit and all these different books. These are people that didn't go. Right? These are people. Tobit is a little, you know, earlier time frame. But these are people that didn't go. Right? Tobit went into into captivity in the Assyrian captivity. You remember, if y'all remember when we was reading about the Assyrian captivity, all the people of north of the northern tribes were offered an option by God, didn't they? He told them, you can stay here and go into captivity, or you can go into Judah. Right? And the ones who didn't go into Judah are the ones who went into captivity. All these people that go into captivity are 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 uh in this in this situation, now the most high God told you, if you go into captivity, you'll be good. Right? Don't stay in Judah. Now you got people decide to stay in Judah. Right? So when we talk a little bit about the Maccabees, we'll see what 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 type of figs they were. And then we say, okay, when they document if, if the most high God calls somebody bad figs, should I be looking at their book like it's the gospel? That don't make sense to me. I I look at it like it's history. Right? But everything you did was in rebellion to the Most High God. Keep going. It's all right. We'll get to it. <clears throat> so will I give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes, and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt, I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse, in all places where I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, and I will send the sword, the famine, and the pestilence among them, so they be consumed from off the land that I give unto them and to their fathers. Right. So that's the exact same thing that Ezekiel just prophesied. Right. But you see that Jeremiah is applying that to the bag figs, to the evil figs. Right. Which is the people who decide to stay in Judah when the Most High God said, go ahead and go in, go ahead, go serve uh, Nebuchadnezzar if you want to live. Right. Keep going. Is that the end? Yeah. All right. So I think I think we'll we'll pick it up next week and we'll keep reading in Jeremiah. We'll pick it up at Jeremiah chapter six and uh, kind of read through seven. Because Jeremiah has a lot, right? There's a lot that we have to get through, but we have to kind of build this up until we get to the point where the seed, there's a lot of prophecy in between. Um, if, if, we, if we look on here, it's a lot of prophecy in between here and here, right? A ton of prophecy are happening in between here, between these two. 
right? Daniel too, but it's not a ton of prophecy from Daniel. But between Ezekiel and um, and Jeremiah, a lot of the prophecy of their book come right here. Like I know their life it, it spans right here, but all they talking was right here. You know what I'm saying? The mass majority of they talking was about this time period right here. So we going we gonna spend a lot of time here just kind of going through all the different prophecy that they they set forth in front of all the people to get them a chance to turn, to get them a chance to obey, to get them a chance to submit. And a lot of times you'll see that people did not continue to be rebellious, right? And that's something that we have to keep in mind for ourselves. We got to make sure that it's in our mind to turn away from sin. It's in our mind to humble ourselves before the Most High God, no matter what people think of us, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, we have to be able to humble ourselves and put God first, right? And if you learn to put God first with the little things, you know what I'm saying, with things that you think are insignificant, things that don't really matter, it makes it easier to put God first when the big things come. All of us in our mind, we in our mind, it's simple if somebody hold a gun to your hand and say, hey, say a cuss word and disrespect God. Curse God right now. You know what I'm saying? Somebody put a gun in your head curse God right now or I kill you. In our mind, that's a simple decision. Right? Because it's obvious, right? It's like in our now it's really not as simple as you think it is. Right? But in your mind it is. In your mind like, man, I never I'd rather take the bullet than to curse God. That's what we say to ourselves, right? But in reality, if you haven't built yourself up mentally to even make the smallest decision like that, trust me, you will find some way to get yourself out of that situation before even thinking about serving God, right? You have to you have to take the very small, 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 small examples of how do I put God first with this? I'm at school, I'm at work, right? I'm, I'm with my family, I'm doing this. How do I put God first in the things that I do? And then let me see how I do it when it comes game time. The most I got in, he ain't gonna put you in no situation like that when he know you, you 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 put you put him last in every other situation in your life. You think he gonna give you the glory to look like, oh look, you some martyr. You know what I'm saying? You put God first and everybody gonna respect you. Like, she is about to die for that thing. He is about to die for that thing. Right? He ain't about to put you in that situation. He's gonna let you die a normal darn death and go right to hell because you've been putting him last in everything you do. Right? But it's the one, if we put him first in these little things and just the little things, that's when the most high God to exalt you be like, yeah, he proved it. How you think it worked with Abraham? Yeah. You remember Abraham? First thing he told Abraham, he was like, yo, 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 go ahead and get out of the land with your family. You know what I mean? Why don't you uh, split off? Go to the land of Canaan. Right? Abraham did it. Then after Abraham did that, he gave him a little more. Like, all right, for sure. Look, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, why don't you, uh, what do you tell him next? He, uh, oh, and him and Lot got into it. You know what I'm saying? He separated from Lot. Cause remember, he told him, separate from your family. Right? Then he brought Lot with him. Then all of a sudden, him and Lot, you know what I'm saying, they people start fighting. He told Lot, he's like, you know what I'm saying, why don't you, you know what I'm saying, take whatever part you want. Soon as the most, soon as he got away from the most high God, most high God started talking to Abraham like, yo, 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 look, all this land, I'm going to give it to you. Right when he separated from Lot. Right? Then after that, you know what I'm saying, he told him, listen, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to make you a great nation. Abraham believed him. He accounted to him righteousness. Right. And it just keep going and keep going. But that happened with all the men of God. You got to obey in the small little thing. Once you do that, most I got looking at you like, all right. Then he gets to the point with Abraham. He said, should I share with him what I'm going to do to Sodom and Gomorrah? I'm going to go ahead and share it with him because I already know he's going to tell his people exactly what they need to do. According to me. He already know it because he's already shown a record of obedience to the most High God. That's like, that has to be our mindset. We got to put God first with all the little thing, man. Everything you sacrifice for God, just know it's coming back. Sometimes it come back in this life. I tell my wife all the time, like, man, we don't have what we have. We don't enjoy the peace that we have. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't enjoy some of these pleasures that we enjoy in this life unless we didn't sacrifice, right? We constantly look for ways to sacrifice for the most high God. Constantly. Sacrifice family time. Sacrifice, sacrifice uh, money, sacrifice, whatever it is, we constantly are looking to do that. And sometimes it get tough. And sometimes it get hard. And sometimes it causes an argument and all that. And we got to remind each other that, you know what? This is what we're doing it for. Right? 
Because that's what the Most High God blessed. And it ain't got to be big. It's the little stuff that we looking for. It's the little stuff y'all got to do. When y'all sitting around at school, y'all sitting around, you know what I'm saying, playing around with your friends and all that stuff, look for the opportunities there. You know what I'm saying? With Zahar and his basketball games and practicing and all this stuff, that's when you got to look for the opportunities. In a time where you think nobody watching, nobody doing nothing, put God first. You put God first in them little situations, you'll see. You know what I'm saying? You'll see. Ain't nobody mess with you. You people gonna have to respect you differently. You know what I'm saying? They ain't gonna think you cool. They ain't gonna they ain't gonna invite you to the parties. They ain't gonna do all this stuff into the club. I don't get invited to none of my listen. We used to be party party. That's all we used to do at party party. All my friends don't invite me into none of that stuff. That's cool though. Guess what? Every one of them do though. They all respect me. They all got a different letter le level of honor and say, and I respect them and honor them, even though we live a totally different life. But they all got a different level of respect and honor for me. Right? And that's all we want. We want honor from the most high God, and the most high God gonna make everybody else honor us. That's how it works. All right. All right, let's pray out. Oh, well, first, any questions? You got any questions online? You know, I was about to pray out right on the people online. I be getting in trouble for that type of stuff. No questions? Oh, we got one. In Jeremiah 29, 6, was he telling Israel to intermingle and marry the captive of the people? No, nah, they didn't. No, nah, he didn't say that. He didn't say, let's go back to it. This is uh this is uh Jeremiah 29. Six. Let's read exactly what he's saying. It's Jeremiah chapter 29. Let's go back to uh let's start at ver actually verse one. It's Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 1. Yeah, he didn't tell them to go intermingle with the Babylonians. He didn't say not to either, though, right? But let's let's just be clear about exactly what he said so that you know these people will try to twist it. People will try to twist it both ways. Right, I don't want to twist nothing. I want to look at exactly what it say. I'm scratching my couch, boy. It's Jeremiah chapter uh, twenty nine, verse one. Watch what the book say. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders, which were carried away captive to the pre and and to the priest. The mm -hmm. prophets and the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. After Jeconiah the king and the queen and the eunuchs and the princes of Judah and Jerusalem and all the carpenters and smiths were departed from Jerusalem. By the hand of Elsa, the son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent into unto Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build mm -hmm. ye houses and dwell in them. Plant he gardens. said, build ye houses and dwell in them. Watch this. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. He okay. said, plant gardens and then eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters. Right? He said, take wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives of your sons and give your daughters to husbands. Right? And then make sure your daughters and your, your, your sons get married. At no point did he say who they marrying or who they can't marry and who they can marry. That's not what this was about. It was just telling them to get comfortable in the land. So he's not telling them go marry a Babylonian. And he's not telling them don't marry a Bab Babylonian. He's simply saying go over there and uh, get comfortable into the land. Right? So we wouldn't go here to learn about who they can and can't marry. And there's a lot of people that do try to use this for both purposes to say, oh, you can marry Gentile because he said here, that's not what he said. He did not tell you to marry Gentiles here. Right. And he didn't tell you, you can't marry Gentiles here. Our law sets up that law for us. What is it? Uh, we don't have to get it right now, but I think it's Deuteronomy 24, if I'm not mistaken, or 23. Yeah, we could. Uh, Deuteronomy 23. It'll tell you who we can who we can marry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The time know. frames around who we can marry. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we have multiple places where it told us never marry the Canaanites. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Like the Moabites, I think it's like 10 generations. And you know what I'm saying? Ammonites, 10 generations. I think it's three generations for the Egyptian. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? The 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 Canaanites, you know what I'm saying? The Amorites, you can't ever marry them. You know what I'm saying? That thing's a law forever for us. You know what I'm saying? So if you ever find out you're dealing with a Canaanite, that got that. You know what I'm saying? You got the, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I mean? That thing got that. So I hope that answers the question. We got any more questions? All right, well, let's go ahead and pray out there.